How did this universe come into existence? Why did it come into existence? Will it ever come to an end? Very deep philosophical questions that pervade the deepest recesses of human consciousness. For most, the simple answer was God. But that engendered other unanswered questions, such as, who is this supreme being God? What is he like? What does he expect of us? This reflected a real and innate belief in God by human beings and their need to worship him. Consequently, human beings turned to the worship of God, but each in their own way. Oblations offered to stones, humans prostrating to animals, gods fighting and killing each other, other gods taking sides to some people against others. Some believe in monotheism, whereas others call for trinity. Others think that all this is nonsense and there is nothing there to be worshipped. Amongst all this looms one question, where is the truth? We are in a Buddhist temple now where the faithful will offer their prayers. Standing in front of some of these statues of Buddha, they will pray, they will prostrate and seek forgiveness and repent. Here also, the statues of Buddha filled the temple, even though historically Buddha himself did not order people to worship him. Many also say that in Buddhism, creed and belief in God is not the main focus. The main focus is on the concept of alleviating suffering, on self-improvement and of things of that nature. But as we can see, worship plays its role and has its importance for the faithful as they pray to Buddha. The persistence question that was buzzing in human minds till the time being, who is the creator? Who deserves to be worshipped? Who is controlling everything around us? In other words, drowning in the sea after losing the final wooden wreck I was holding to, whom do I call seeking for help? This is quite similar to what happened during the time of Prophet Noah, peace and blessings be upon him. His people had among them some respected elders, which they greatly respected and later on venerated. After their death and they had made statues for them, with time they worshipped them. They worshipped them. They worshipped them. Saying that man throughout history worshipped literally everything isn't wrong at all. Man worshipped stones, trees, and wooden statues. Later, he worshipped golden statues, the sun, the moon, the stars, the wind. Then, he worshipped animals, like cows and mice. And he still does, actually. And of course, he worshipped other human beings. In Christianity, the concept of divinity took center stage. Several ecumenical councils were held, historically, to deal with some of the controversial issues of the Christian creed, such as the Council of Nicaea in 325 CE, which spoke about the essence of the Christian faith, the doctrine of the Trinity. And later, the Council of Chalcedon in 451, which dealt with the question of the nature of Jesus Christ and the reconciliation between his divinity and his humanity. Seeking to explain his divinity, the Trinity proclaimed that there was one God the Father, one Lord Jesus Christ, and the only begotten Son of God, and thirdly the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And if anyone thought that the Sonship of Jesus detracted from his divinity, they added the phrases God of God, Light of Light, and Very God of Very God, leaving no room for any doubt that Jesus Christ was God incarnate on earth. When observing all of the above, I wonder, why does man have this feverish desire to have something to worship and prostrate to, to the extent of creating it by his own self, then worship it? 
I couldn't find any explanation to this, but that everyone has an urge need to worship something that exceeds him in power and strength, something to seek refuge in the time of hardship and deriving from it the spiritual strength that helps him to live. Judaism, there's some debate about the significance of the belief in God. Many scholars argue that Judaism is more a religion of orthopraxy rather than orthodoxy, with its focus more on practice and action rather than faith or belief. And others may say otherwise. In fact, there are many names for God in Judaism, the most prominent of which is the Tetragrammaton, the four-letter expression YH. VH, pronounced by some as Yahweh and declared to be too sacred to be pronounced by many rabbis. And there are other names such as El Shaddai the Almighty and Elohim which connotes justice. Yahweh known as the God of Israel, a, a phrase which the Bible is replete with and a concept which seems organically related to the national superiority of the Jewish people. In ancient Egypt, polytheism was rampant and the nexus of several religions was the sun. As in many other ancient religions, there were many images and icons of these gods and they worshipped these images. Only the privileged priests would enter the temple, would bathe the image of the god, would feed it and clothe it and also worship it. There are 22 main religions in today's world, 900 million people who do not believe in God at all. They don't even care about the whole matter in addition to hundreds of different faiths and beliefs. All of these beliefs declare being the right one, and many of them consider all the others infidels that will end up in the hell fire after death. I wonder who is right then? Now we're in a Hindu temple. As you can see, the usage of the icons and the images is quite extensive, as in many other religions. And each of these images is referring to one of the gods or some of the companions of the gods. Brahma is known as the creator, Vishnu as the preserver, Shiva as the destroyer. And then you have Krishna, who is an avatar or one of the avatars of Vishnu. But to some, Krishna is the supreme god. But then you have Lakshmi, who is the consort of Vishnu and the goddess of wealth and prosperity. And this is precisely what many Hindus ask from Lakshmi. And you have other gods and the focus changes from one Hindu denomination or group to another. Animals have also had their share of reverence and worship in different religions. This is an example, what the Hindus call the god Ganesha, a god with a human body and an elephant head. Actually, many Egyptian, ancient Egyptian deities are half animal and half human. Serpents and snakes have also had their share of worship in the ancient Egyptian, African, Native American, and even Hindu traditions. In South America, the jaguar was worshipped at one time. As for the issue of cows in Hinduism, some say they are just revered. Others say they are worshipped. Mahatma Gandhi, after making a comparison between his human mother and the cow, gave preference to the cow and therefore said, yes, I worship the cow and I will defend cow worship. Now the Hindu temple is closing and therefore they went 
to the individual gods and they gave them their food before they closed the curtain. God, all glory be to him, has sent thousands of prophets to humanity since their inception with a comprehensive yet simple message. Worship God alone through sincere devotion and obedience and do not associate any partners with him. This was the essence of the message of every prophet, beginning with Adam, later Noah, through to Abraham, and later with the prophets of the Abrahamic traditions, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Peace be upon them all. As each people would corrupt the original message that the particular prophet was sent to convey, God would send another prophet after him to set the people straight again, finally to conclude with the seal of the prophets, Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him, sent to all of humanity with the final revelation, the noble Quran. Taking into consideration all that we talked about, all of the different gods that have been worshipped, and in all different ways, the question remains, does that justify that humanity worships God in the way they see fit? What is the purpose of religion? For many, the main objective of religion is character refinement. As important as that may be, character refinement is not the most important aim of religion. The most important aim of religion is to introduce one to his creator. The most important goal of religion is to teach one how to worship God in a way that pleases him. Therefore, it is not to be left to the subjective whims and desires of the creatures of God. Finally, the question remains, who do you worship? Who is your God? How do you worship God? This is the question that every person needs to ask themselves. And I ask you, my dear brother, my dear sister, my friend, I ask you, to listen to that voice deep inside of you telling you that God Almighty cannot be like any of his creatures that God Almighty must be unique that God Almighty is in a field of his own and that the greatest and the most unequivocal and most absolute and most uncontestable truth is the uniqueness, the oneness, and the transcendence of God. God Almighty is one. God Almighty is the eternal refuge. God Almighty did not beget, nor was he begotten, and there is none equal to him. Therefore, God is without partners. God is without associates. God does not have a wife or a son. God is not like his creatures. God is unique. There is nothing in existence that is like God Almighty. He is the one and only. The relationship with God is a direct one. Go to him directly. Speak to him directly. Complain to him directly. Seek forgiveness from him without intermediaries. Repent to him without intermediaries. That is Allah, my God and your God and the God of all existence and all creation, whether they know it or not, whether they believe in him or not, whether they are a Christian or a, or a Jew or a Hindu, or a Buddhist or any other denomination. He is God of all. If you know him, praise him and worship him. If you are looking for him, then pray for his guidance 
and you will find him. قالوا نعبد أصناما فنظل لها عاكفين قال هل يسمعونكم إذ تدعون أو ينفعونكم أو يضرون قالوا بل وجدنا آباءنا كذلك يفعلون Oh, my God.